What up, what up? Welcome into this edition of the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime Saturday night. I am Jamie McCracken, and I know you have already seen the final score today. Kentucky loses in the swamp, but just give me two minutes, and I promise we'll move on to Cumberland's more at stating UVA wise. Roll it, Director Jonathan. Let's go down to Gainesville. The Kentucky Wildcats have been gator bait for a long time, chomped up and spit out by the Florida Gators for almost three decades. And just like last Saturday, Kentucky started its first possession three and out. Florida's second possession goes 15 plays and it's capped off with this Mark Thompson three yard touchdown run. That ate up seven and a half minutes on the clock. Seven nothing to Gators. Cats, they come back out next possession. Drew Barker looking for Jeff Badette, but Quincy Wilson says, that's my ball, bruh. That interception doesn't help. The Wildcats just start out terrible. Right after the INT, Luke Del Rio wastes no time. Vern Lundquist with the call. Goes deep left side and the man is open. It's Callaway. He hits him in stride. Callaway. Touchdown, Florida. Antonio Callaway, 78 yards. Good news is the defense was not out there for too long, Kentucky fans. Let's go second quarter. Del Rio steps up this time. The ball is tipped and it's picked up by Derek Beatty. The one turnover the Kentucky Wildcats forced on the day was a Derek Beatty pick. However, last five minutes of the half, Barker, he gets picked off again on a screen pass. That's when you know things are going horribly wrong. Take another look. I mean, how does this happen? Goodness. Yes, Jalen Tabor just jumps it there. Late third quarter, now 31 to nothing. Jordan Scarlett just follows his blockers. Easy stuff right there. Four-yard touchdown, 38-0 in the swamp. Gets worse in the fourth quarter. Del Rio flares it out to LaMichael P. Ryan. The freshman goes 28 yards for the score. One of four touchdown passes for Del Rio and the Florida Gators. They chomp him up and spit the Cats out again. A demoralizing loss for Mark Stoops and the Football Cats program. Let's go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. 45-7, the final in the swamp. Yeah, 30th straight win for Florida over Kentucky. Del Rio's 320 yards passing were Florida's most against an SEC opponent since Chris Leak threw for 322 yards against Arkansas in 2004. You see Drew Barker there. Two pass completions to Kentucky players. He had three pass completions to the Florida defense. That's not good. Yeah, I mean, we definitely need to learn from, you know, what has happened. Um, so, I mean, I kind of agree with Coach Stoops where we don't need to start over completely, but we just need to learn from um, everything that's happened uh, the past two games and the goods and the bads and um, take out both of them and just really learn from them and um, come together as a team. And, uh, you know, I think we can get it turned around for sure. I mean, it's only two games out of uh, – we got ten more left, like you said. So, I'm uh, still very optimistic. Not a lot to say other than we got our butts kicked. There's nothing – there's nowhere – Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. We're in the arena. Time to go to work. That's where we go. We go right back. We look at the film. We look at what we're asking them to do, what we can do. Um, and uh, the players need to look at themselves. Coaches need to look at things and, and uh, see, what, see what we can execute. I know we could play better than that. All right, now that we got that over with, to Bristol Motor Speedway, not for racing, but for football. Number 17, Tennessee hosting Virginia Tech and what goes down as the largest crowd to ever watch a college football game. Late first quarter, no score. First and goal, Jared Evans to Sam Rogers. Yeah, he's in. Count it. Touchdown, Vol Tech. It's 7 0. Let's go. Later, second and two, Trayvon McMillian. Yeah, let's go. Let's turn up. He, 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 he gone down the sidelines. Peace out. 69-yard touchdown. How about Vautech, the Hokies? They got a 14-0 lead on the number 17 team in the country. Hokies looking for more. Second and 25 this time. Jared Evans fumbles the handoff. The balls hop on it. Tennessee recovers. And they capitalize. Josh Jobs to Dwan Jennings. Beautiful right there. Five-yard touchdown. They cut it within seven. 14-7. Now look, former uh, Virginia Tech Hokie, Michael Vick, on hand for the game. Then in the second... Josh Dobbs pass to Josh Malone for the 38-yard touchdown. Now Tennessee's right back in it. We got a 14 all game. 47 seconds left in the half. 17-14. Tennessee Dobbs says, I'll just do it myself. Skip to my loo. Now, right now, this game's in the fourth quarter, and Tennessee leads the game 31 to 17. All right. Number nine, Georgia, hosting Nickel State. Cupcake City, right? No, Nickel State came to play in Athens today, boys. Jarrell Rogers. 
gets Nichols State the lead 14 to 13 over Georgia. Now following drive for Georgia, Jacob Eason, the true freshman at quarterback this year for the Bulldogs, he finds Isaiah McKenzie. Now the dogs, yeah, now the dogs are rolling. Bye bye. Oh, he just picks up a big block there. 66 yards for the touchdown. Now Georgia's got the lead back. Late fourth quarter, Georgia looking to ice it. And on a third and four, Nick Chubb gets a first down. That'll do it. He moves into eighth place in school history with that run right there. 2,593 rushing yards in his career. And Georgia escapes. And I mean escapes with a 26-24 victory. Coming up next on the show, we go out to Wise Virginia to check in with Cavs, plus the Cumberland's Patriots put on an offensive clinic against Cincinnati Christian. We'll go to Williamsburg next. Welcome back to the show. Just a year ago, the UVA Wise Cavaliers got stomped by Notre Dame College 47 to nothing. But there's a whole new team this year in Wise. They won their opener last week to start 1 0, and the Cavs certainly wanted to pull an upset this week. UVA Wise looking to move up to 2-0, hosting Notre Dame College today. Opening drive for Wise, Carlton Griffith with the handoff. He punches it in for the Cavs from two yards out, 7-0 with UVA Wise. Yeah, they got something to celebrate in Wise, Virginia this year, but the Falcons would answer right back with a 75-yard touchdown, so he can't give up these. Mitchell, she goes. He goes bye-bye. Tied up at seven after that. Next drive for Notre Dame. They will find the end zone again this time. Man, they just let up some big plays today. CJ Germany. 81 yards to the house. 13 to seven after the missed extra point. It was 29 seven going into halftime recess. We go fourth quarter now. Wise trying to hang in there. Skyler Barnlow. Bronlow, I should say. Brownlow. That takes me three tries. Plus, it was a three yard touchdown. All right. Last chance for UVA Wise here. Under a minute to go in the fourth. And ew, they can't connect. Comeback comes up short with a 35-29 loss. Wise goes to Shepard University next week. The Rams are the defending league champions. Coach gave us a great halftime speech, and we just realized that we can really play with anybody. We, we know we develop as more of a team, more of a, a, a something to, to, to deal with. Like last year, people just thought of us as, oh, yeah, this is an easy win. Now we're fighting for something this year. There's no 22-point play in football, so it didn't matter what the scoreboard said, that we were going to have to play at least four possessions, you know, to have a chance to, to get ahead of them. And, and, uh, and so I said, Let's, we can't get to 29 until we get to 14. Cumberlands and Cincinnati Christian getting together down in Williamsburg tonight. Now, this is a late start to this one, like a two-hour delay. There was bus trouble, that's all we'll say. Opening drive for the Patriots, Seth Burke right into your living room, right into Josh McKinney's camera. Seven to nothing, Cumberland's in the first quarter. UC forces an eagle punt, and then why not go back to your bread and butter, Burke? I don't think he's anything but butter. He's just a rock. Look at him. Lots of yardage there. Picks up the first down, and then like the first drive, this one results in a touchdown. Adam Craig to the air, connects with Milton Shelton. That's a beauty right there. 16-yard pitch and catch. Let's go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard to see the game's in progress right now. And in the fourth quarter, the Cumberland's Patriots are leading 35 to 7. If they were to win, they would move to 2 and 1. And next up for Cumberland is next weekend down in Tennessee. They'll take on Cumberland. All right, Moorhead State hosting VMI at Jane Stadium tonight. Early in the second, VMI's outcome connects to Dane Four Lines. Oh, yeah, it sets him up with the play fake. And the Four Lines going to zig in, zig out. Touchdown, 7 nothing and VMI. Later in the second, it's Cobb. He's, he's back at it again. Oh, yeah, he, he's not going that way. He's going this way. Mm-hmm. Beautiful there, 14 to nothing. After that, Aaron Sanders touchdown. Third quarter, MSU gets on the board via the Estill County, or at least the former Estill County engineer. That's Trevor Jones. 16-yard touchdown run, but the Eagles fall to 0-2 on the season with a 17-13 loss in Moorhead. All right, let's go to high school football now. A night of big plays on the high school gridiron last night. Josh McKinney recaps the action in this week's least famous recipe, Hazard and Whitesburg two-minute drill. If you like big plays, then week three was quite the treat. We start Second in Pulaski County seven, with our game of the week between like Hazard and Somerset. Moment, we'll just let he Tanner Hesterberg back. and Jim Jordan Frazier down. take it from here. And it's caught into the open field for Hazard. That's Braxton Whitaker. Here's Doe looking for his second touchdown of the night, and he has it. 
Allen Central used two long touchdown runs, a pick six, and a punt return for a touchdown to jumpstart its blowout win over Jenkins. The Rebels now 3-0 for the first time since 2009. After blowing out Eastridge last week, Knott County Central earned another big win by shutting out South Floyd 47-0. Williamsburg earned its first win of the season and did so in comeback fashion over Frankfurt. The Yellow Jackets squeaking past the Panthers 34-33 on homecoming. Whitley County has now won back-to-back -back games after falling in its season opener to Corbin. The Colonels had no problem Friday night with West Jessamine 55-13. South Laurel's up and down season continues. Loss, win, loss, win. The Cardinals had no problem whatsoever with Middlesboro 46-8. Jared Grubb so good on the field he spells his name with two B's. Up the road at North Laurel, Chris Larkey and his team are off to a 3-1 start. The Jaguars earned their second straight win Friday, beating visiting Mason County 28-10. Harlan County is this close to being really good. The Black Bears once again played well, but not well enough. Falling to number 7 Knox Central in Barberville, the Panthers winning a defensive battle 15-13. Do the struggles continue for the Pineville Mountain Lions? Their second straight loss decided by a touchdown, both coming at home Friday night to Paris, 33-28. And finally, if there is a team that poses a legitimate threat to Belfry in the East in Class 3A, it is Corbin. The Redhounds went on the road to Boyle County and dominated previously unbeaten Danville 28-7 Corbin now 4-0 on the year, and not to look too far ahead, but that Corbin-Belfry matchup would be at Corbin the day after Thanksgiving with a spot in the state championship on the line. Now there are sure to be big plays in that game should we get there, but for now we will be thankful for the top play nominees we received Friday night and hope week four is even better. This has been your league's famous recipe, Hazard and Whitesburg, two-minute drill. Good stuff there from Josh McKinney. As you can tell, we are already teasing that Belfry and Corbin game, so hopefully it happens in the postseason. That certainly would be a lot of fun. But, hey, remember, our Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week next week is Belfry and Pikeville. Play of the Week is next, and we remember longtime voice of the Kentucky Wildcats, Kaywood Ledford, who died 15 years ago this past Monday in this week's episode of Sports Overtime Rewind. 15 years ago last Monday, Kentucky lost an icon. Harlan County native Kaywood Lefford died at the age of 75. We go back to 2001 in this week's episode of Sports Overtime Rewind and remember the voice of the Wildcats. Kaywood Ledford was known across Kentucky as the voice of the Kentucky Wildcats. A legend in Kentucky, Ledford earned the distinction of being the most honored and most celebrated sportscaster in Kentucky history. He was considered by many of his peers to be one of the finest basketball play-by-play -play men ever to sit behind a microphone. During his 39-year career with the University of Kentucky, Ledford was voted Sportscaster of the Year 22 times in the Commonwealth. He was also one of the most renowned thoroughbred racing sportscasters in the nation, receiving the industry's highest honor, the prestigious Eclipse Award, three times. For 20 years, fans associated his voice with the run for the roses. He was inducted into the Kentucky Athletic Hall of Fame in 1987. And in addition to his illustrious broadcasting career, he wrote several books. Kaywood Ledford brought a dignity to Kentucky basketball. A mountain man with cosmopolitan sensibilities, his voice was the one folks trusted for their important information. Like UK basketball itself, Ledford made Kentuckians feel good about themselves. He began his legendary career in Harlan over 50 years ago after graduating from Center College in Danville and teaching English in the local high school. Two years later, he was broadcasting the Cats in Lexington and finally on Louisville's 50,000 watt powerhouse WHAS radio. Even more than the legends on the court, it was Ledford who defined Kentucky basketball, carrying it to the ends of the Commonwealth to folks who could never get to a game. He painted pictures that kept his audiences riveted to the radio 
without ever laying eyes on the action. Kaywood Ledford never shied away from saying whatever needed to be said. Some things would be considered treading on sacred ground if someone else said it, but if Kaywood said it, people knew it was true. Beginning with the Bear and Adolph's boys, through 39 years at the microphone to Rick and Richie, Kaywood Ledford was Mr. Sports in Kentucky. Although known nationally, he never strayed far from his roots in eastern Kentucky, where he retired in 1992. The voice of the Wildcats, Kaywood Ledford, who passed away last week, still lives on in the memories of his millions of fans. You fans have made it really a special and short 39 years, and I'll always love you, and God bless you. Good stuff there. The current voice of the Wildcats, of course, Tom Leach, has been calling UK sporting events since 1997. Let's go to our play of the week. You can't make this stuff up. Number 22, Oklahoma State hosting Central Michigan. No time left of the clock. Central Michigan down three. Cooper Rush. What do you got? Well, not the best Hail Mary, but Jesse Kroll catches it and pitches it back to Corey Willis, and you got to be kidding me. Chippewas going to win this football game. Uh, now, this play actually should not have happened. Oklahoma State had an intentional grounding called on them before this play, but the refs gave Central Michigan an untimed down mistakenly as we take another look. Oh my goodness, Central Michigan, the Chippewas. That's your play of the week. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. All right, thank you for joining me. That's what happens, by the way. I just talk to myself now that I, that I have no co-host for the show. I can talk to you. You're right, I can talk to our director, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan, great show. Thank you for joining me on this edition of the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime Saturday night. Hope you had fun watching the Cincinnati Bengals, by the way, begin their season tomorrow in New York versus the JETS Jets, Jets, Jets. See you again next week.